Drew, obviously you work with uh, the same uh, long snapper over the last few years in Liam McCullough and uh, Matt said that, that Bradley is, is, is in line to take over that spot. Just from, from your end, obviously receiving some snaps, how, is, uh, how has he been? Right. I mean, that's kind of been the elephant in the room in the, uh, the special teams unit. You know, Liam did a great job for the four years he was here. And, you know, it's going to be a new transition for me and Blake. Um, it's going to affect field goal and punt. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it was great this whole off season. You know, we kind of had a chance to work more one-on-one -on -one since we had, you know, that time off. And both uh, Rowan and Brad, you know, they showed a tremendous amount of uh, progress. And especially just from last year, they, they've taken a big step. But I think, you know, Brad does have that upper hand right now. And he's taking the majority of the ones right now. And I feel pretty confident. You said you guys did one-on-one work um what did you guys do kind of during the quarantine and throughout the off season being limited in practice time yeah really just finding an open field um we weren't able to be here at the woody but going down to the rpac fields or um, find another high school that's open um hopping the fence sometimes just be able to get that work anyway and uh yeah i mean we we probably got more together brad and i did than liam and i did in, in a normal off season so Next up is Colin Hill from 11 Warriors with Tim May on deck. Colin. Hey, Drew. I, I was wondering, who, who do you think in your time at Ohio State has sort of been, you know, your best punt gunner, and, and who do you think is, is in line to maybe play that role and, and have your trust this year? I mean, there's been, there's been so many guys. I mean, it's hard. Um, I think, you know, first one was Denzel. I mean, he was hard, and I, I didn't think anybody would surpass him, and then you know, here comes Terry, and um, yeah, I think Terry was probably the, the one that stands out to me the most. He saved me a lot of times on those uh, pooch punts. I remember the Michigan State game two years ago when we were there. The first one I had that he uh, batted down back into the field, I mean, that ball would have landed three yards in the end zone if he wasn't there. So, I mean, um, that, that, that play kind of stands out to me. But, I mean, they've all been incredible. Um, you know, Chris has been uh, just as wonderful the last – you know, a couple of years. And uh, yeah, I think guys, I mean, it's definitely a, a role that they take a lot of pride in. And I, I mean, I was trying to think when the last gunner wasn't a first round pick. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's big shoes to fill and they put the best guys there for a reason. So. Who do you think's in line to fill that this year? I mean, Chris is still going to be doing it. And I think, um, I think Proctor's doing it a little bit too. Um, I mean, they, they're cycling guys in right now, just seeing who can, who can fill that hole. But uh I'm sure and I'm confident anybody they put out there is going to be able to get the job done and maybe even surpass some of the greats we've had. All right, next up is Tim May from the Tim May podcast and Letter Monroe with Pat Murphy on deck. Tim. All right, thank you very much, Mike. I, I was wondering, Drew, how are you balancing uh, being married, et cetera? How much of a challenge has it been during this COVID-19 era, uh, et cetera? How much has it crimped your style? How much have you blossomed uh, being married? Yeah, it's been great. Um, it's kind of been like a, a long honeymoon, honestly, because we got married right at the beginning yeah. right before everything shut down. We snuck it in. I can't tell you how many weddings she planned that had got canceled because of everything, and we ended up just kind of eloping. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say we're still in the honeymoon phase and things are going great. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like living with your best friend at this point. So it's, it's fun to come home and uh, I'll sneak her at the go meal every now and then, and she's happy. So uh, her cooking's good, too. We put on a little weight during quarantine, not going to lie. But uh, half hour of cardio every other day is, uh, has gotten that down a little bit. But uh, it's been great. I have to adjust to this. But uh, I don't know. These, yeah. things, these things, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to wear it during the game, and I haven't noticed any problem with it yet. So it's, it's going to be good. Hey, one other thing. I had a, I had a lawyer guy on my uh, podcast several weeks ago, and we were talking about the name, image, and likeness situation. And, and you came up because, you know, you could be possibly, uh, you know, shilling for a, uh, a soft drink company or a water company right now if, you, if that was in vogue. Or do you feel like you're missing out on an opportunity that other people will benefit from down the road, if you follow my drift there? Well, I mean, I owe a lot of credit to Ohio State. You know, it, I, I don't think I would have that platform without Ohio State. Um, you know, I, I would just be flipping water bottles and maybe I have like a thousand followers of like some niche um, people that are interested in seeing water bottle flipping. But now yeah. I'm the Ohio State punter that flips water bottles. I also flips the field on Saturdays. You know, that brings a little more attraction to it. And 
you know, obviously I'm, I'm going to try to take advantage of it once I'm done here. Um, but I, I could have made a few bucks while I was here. That's without a doubt. And, um, but you know, I owe a lot of that to Ohio state. So I have no problem with, uh, you know, kind of putting in my time now and then kind of reaping the rewards afterwards. So. Thank you, man. Yep. Alrighty. Next up is Pat Murphy from 247 sports with Jeremy Birmingham on deck. Pat. Hey Drew. Um, when we talk to a lot of the, the skill position guys and, and things like that, you ask about goals, they talk about potentially statistics or, or even awards, things like that. Punting, I think, is a little different. And I know we've talked to you before about when you're on the field, it means the offense didn't do what they wanted to do. So what, what does a punter, and you in particular, what, what are the goals you have going into a season at this time of year? Yeah, we just want to be the best punt team in America. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to look at a punter. You can look at distance, hang time, average, and kind of, you know, look at all those things and rank the punters. But, you know, I look at it more as just like a punt team in whole. Um, net, obviously, is a, a, the number I look at the most. Um, is that, you know, that d directly impacts the game. And, um, yeah, as long as we're the number one punt team in America, that means I did my job and our punt team did our job as a whole. And we, uh, you know, put our defense in the best position possible and even bailed out our offense sometimes. So. Uh, that's kind of my personal goal. It's been my goal ever since I've been here. So. I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but does punting as little as possible come into that? Because that means the offense did its job? Right. Yeah, I mean, we certainly, uh, that's one thing we don't do around here a lot is, is punt. But, you know, you just got to take advantage of those opportunities when you get it. doesn't matter if it's, you know, fourth quarter when the, the threes are in. Um, you know, that punt, statistically, it's going to matter just as much as, you know, a big punt. So uh, you got to treat every punt the same. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Next up is Jeremy Birmingham from Letterman Row with Clay Hall on deck. Jeremy. Drew, how you doing? Good. Hey, I, I know that uh, from a positional standpoint, your your room is as close as any of the other rooms in the you know football program. But uh, position by position, if one guy's the punter, you're like the punter for four years, right? Like that's sort of the way it goes. With a new punter coming in next year and Jesse now signed and, and being over from Australia, what kind of role do you play in helping prepare him or develop him? Because it's not like linebacker where you're, you know, teaching the play, right? Like you're just punting. How, what, what is the role you play moving forward? Right. I think it's uh, pretty similar to uh, Cam's role when I first got here. Um, obviously, you know, I might not be here as much because I redshirted. Um, that first year. So I was able to have Cam and watch him his senior year, arguably his best year and kind of how he just handled the game situations. Um, but definitely, you know, if I come back and visit or, you know, just calling from afar, giving him some, some tips of just kind of how to get adjusted. Obviously he's in a different circumstance than I was because, you know, I was a high school, high schooler coming into college, what, 17, 18, he's already 23. I'm 23 leaving. So he's going to probably be a little more mature than I was just when I got here as far as physically and everything. So I don't think he's gonna have a problem with that, but just kind of, you know, work in the mind during the game and also, you know, handling school and academics at, at the same time. It's gonna be, I mean, it's a learning curve for everybody. And um, so I, I'd definitely give him some tips on how to do that. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yep. And next up is Clay Hall from WSYX with Spencer Holbrook on deck. Clay. Hey, Drew, back to the bottle flipping now that you're kind of an adult dude, married, uh, serious guy. I mean, do you, is your skill level still up to snuff um, on, the, on the flipping expertise there? I would say so. Um, you know, I have kind of taken a little bit of a, a break from it, just kind of social media in general, just with all the craziness going on. And, you know, it's kind of good to just stay in your own little – little bubble, but you know, I still got it. Um, every now and then the guy will challenge me in the locker room to a little bottle flip contest and, you know, still got to assert my dominance there, but, uh, uh, certainly not as much as in the past, but, uh, I still got it. But all those videos are legit. That's not editing. You're that skilled. I, it would take me longer to edit those videos. I'm sure Zach could figure out a way to do it pretty quickly, but <laughs> me personally doing that, it would take me way longer than actually just sitting there for a couple minutes and, and landing it. So. And you're still the king. Oh, 100%. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, next up is Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row with Stephen Means on deck. Spencer. Drew, do you feel like you were at an advantage during this quarantine because you 
are in a position where you can just hop a fence and go kick a ball as long as there's a 60 yard field to, to kick ball or? 60 yards, thanks. That's, that's a little generous, but thank you. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I think I got into a really good uh, routine this off season, just kind of having my own, um, you know, schedule putting it together. I'd go lift, I mean, I'd go kick and then hit legs right after it. Um, sometimes here, you know, Coach mix has got his program. You're just trying to find a way to find fresh legs to go kick. So, you know, I was able to kick probably two, three times a week and then get legs in right afterwards. So um, as far as health-wise, yeah, I found a really good routine, and we've kind of been able to continue that since I got back, talking to Coach Mick and, um, you know, implementing that. And so we're, I'm on, like, a more of a special routine now than I have been in the past, which, you know, it's been, it's been nice. My legs feel good. I feel strong. Uh, we've seen a lot of like special teams blunders uh, since the season started. Maybe teams didn't focus on it as much as they probably should have in the offseason with the weird offseason they had. How, how important is it to get that stuff down right now so when you guys play Nebraska or, or Penn State the next week that, that you don't have some of those early season gaps uh, in special teams? Right, yeah, we're aware of it. They show us, you know, crazy things are happening. And, um, you know, we're able to look at those things and kind of learn from them. Um, Coach Barnes does a great job of, you know, emphasizing all the little details so those things don't happen. And, uh, you know, as long as we keep the same routine we've been doing the last couple of years as far as punting and all the other special teams, I don't see us, you know, having as, uh, those blunders that you've been seeing around college football uh, this season. So, Thank you. Yep. All right, next up is Stephen Means from Cleveland.com with Nathan Baird on deck. Stephen. Hey, Drew. Um how similar is a relationship between a long snapper and a punter to that of a quarterback and a center? I, I think very similar. Um, I mean, I talk to him just about every snap. Uh, most of the time, as long as it's a good snap, I don't notice it. So if he comes up to me and says, how was that snap? And I'm like, I don't know. That's, that means it was a good thing because, you know, I'm more locked in on just the punt. Um, but yeah, we watch, we watch a lot of film and we critique each other a lot. And, uh, you know, with, you got to have a good relationship. That's the guy giving you the ball. You know, you, if you're not on the same page, bad things are going to happen. So. All right, next up, Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Nathan. Hey, Drew, I have another name, image, and likeness question. Some of the opponents of that reform have argued that when you have players uh, gaining – or earning different amounts of money that it can cause sort of resentment within the locker room, within the program. I suppose there'd be a gap between what a backup offensive lineman might make and then what you could do with your skills and then probably another jump up to, let's say, Heisman Trophy finalist quarterback. So I guess just what's your response to that thought? Do you think it would be a problem within a team when you start having these various incomes? I think it could. Um... Um, I don't know if it'd be any different than already the attention, you know, maybe Justin gets over the attention I get. Um, obviously, you know, there's now a monetary value added to that. So it could add a little bit, um, you know, kind of a division in the locker room, which I think there's going to have to be some kind of regulation to avoid that. Um, I was fortunate stamp. There was actually a little, I don't know if it was like committee, but I was able to talk to a lot of, uh, you know, higher up people in Ohio state and kind of pick my brain. I think, along with Zach Harrison, he was on, he was on the zoom call as well. And kind of just got our opinion on it. Cause Zach's, you know, probably going to be able to make some money off of this uh, when this comes out in the next couple of years. And I'm kind of on the tail end, maybe been able to make some off of this. So um, they've got some really good ideas. Um, obviously, you know, nothing's set in place right now. They're still trying to figure it out. Um, but it, uh, I mean, I, it's going to be interesting. It's, it, it could change college landscape, you know, forever. So. All right, and our last questioner for Drew will be Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hi, Drew. Um, Hi. Give, give me a sense of, of Brad Robinson's personality. Um, you know, we're used to the McCulloughs who had their, had their quirks. <laughs> what's, what's Brad like? I mean, every, every specialist got their own little quirk. Um, I mean, Brad's, Brad's more chill, I'd say. Um, you know, he does his job. He gets his, he gets his job done. He loves the weight room, so... Um, I'm a big fan of that. We, uh, we, we do our little Monday morning, uh, bench competition, um, every, every Monday with, uh, coach Nico. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be great. Um, you know, everybody's got their own little quirks and maybe I'll, I'll let you, uh, question him on, on his own little things, but, uh, 
I, I think I think uh, I think he's gonna be great. So. And a completely different topic about about COVID. Um, this is kind of a cloud that hovers over everybody in college football and everybody everywhere. How much do you guys um, worry about it? Uh, how comfortable do you feel with the precautions that Ohio State's taken? Just anything about that? No, I mean we've. If anything, we've exceeded the precautions. I mean, you see here, I'm wearing a mask and I'm on a Zoom call, uh, if that tells you anything. So I, I, I feel very com comfortable um, with uh, coming into the Woody every single day. Now that we're doing the daily testing too, um, you know, I mean, we take we take it to another level and just making sure everything everything is sound. I mean, you see what just happened to Florida. I mean, you know, that was brought up to our attention, you know, after the team meeting, just how how, you know, fragile everything is. You know, one guy gets it, it could, it could spread to a whole locker room, especially with the units that we have and how tight our team is. Uh, guys spend a lot of time together, so you got to be really conscious of it. And, and uh, I think they do a great job emphasizing that um, around the whole team. So. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. All right. Thank you very much.